Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. A couple of months ago there was a big tournament out here at my local course called Olber Open and it was won in a whopping 22 under by Oliver Hansen over the course of three rounds. Now I didn't play in that specific tournament but today we're going to figure out if I would have won if I had played the tournament. And since I only want to play one round today we're going to average it down so I'm going to need to shoot eight under which would have averaged up to 24 under to beat the score and win the tournament. There's going to be a little twist today though because everyone and their mom knows that I would never shoot a random eight under out here in the cold weather and all that stuff and they have way better conditions than I do today to be fair. So to give myself a little chance I'm going to be shooting from the yellow tees, the short ones and hopefully that's going to give me a chance. It's still going to be really hard though I think but it should be possible. My personal record out here from the yellows is 11 under. Mind you that was in perfect conditions in the summer and when I was in actual good disc golf shape. But hey, let's get into it and let's try. 20 holes out here, eight under, come on. Hole one, we're going wingman. Oh no, come on. Okay, well, should still be a par. Pulled it a little bit, but that's fine. I think I'll just go for a little toss up there with the Berg. Oh my goodness, that was terrible. Oh wow. Now putting is usually my biggest problem when it gets cold because my hands get cold but I do have my electrical hand warmer with me out here today. Hopefully that's going to keep my hand a little bit warmer than usual and uh, able to actually move at decent speeds. Starting out with a little 8 meter putt, straddle putt even, to warm up. Alright, let's see what we're working with today. Okay, okay, that's what we're working with. Might have a chance. Now I will say I've only played like three rounds in the last two months so I'm definitely not in a good disc golf shape at the moment but we're gonna try, we're gonna try. See if we can get a birdie on two. It is moved into the easy position so we should be able to get a putt at least. Let's try and keep it kind of high, not full power. Just in the middle of the gap. That's perfect. Well it could have been a little bit higher and we would have gotten closer to the basket but it was in the middle of the gap so I'm very satisfied. Circle's edge pod. There's a whisker right here so I'm just inside the circle. We can't step it. But I don't think we need to. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's up with taking breaks in disc golf, man? It's just, it just works. It just works. Not playing in two weeks. Coming out here and can't miss a putt. Okay, maybe that's a little bit too soon to say that. All right, go in the here. Straight up the middle. Oh, a little bit too much hyzer. Oh, okay. Nice skip, might get a putt from there. This definitely was way too short, but we have 15 meter putt here. A little step through. I mean, just give it a chance, see what happens. Oh, or just lay it up. Make sure not to take a bogey. It's also a strategy. Okay, I really shouldn't need a launcher OS for this distance, but if I do that, it means I can power down a little bit and just chill, chill it out there. So let's just do that. Put it up nice and high. Nice. Oh, that's perfect. And they're good. That's short. How weak am I? Okay, maybe I should have warmed up my forehand a little more. Wow. That was perfect angle and everything. I guess I chilled a little too much. Okay, I guess this isn't one of the holes that you're absolutely counting on getting, but I mean, would have liked to get a little closer in this. Can't give it a run though. Fade. That was a really good bid. It's a little bit left. And now I think we might have a little trick shot putt. That could be a problem. That's actually gonna be a fun little trick shot. Oh no, what have I done to myself? Little beamer. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that was fun. That was fun. We're still one under. But uh, now we're getting into a stretch where we can get a, quite a few birdies in a row, I think, if we do well. I'm going to get a little uh, redemption with the forehand here. Definitely eagleable, especially from this tee. Fun fact, actually, the day that I moved here, I played a round, like, in the evening, just by myself. And I eagled this one first time I played it. So, uh, we're friends. We're definitely friends me in this hole. Yes, perfect. I can't throw that any better. Did nick a little tree but it kept flying uh, forward so 
I think we're gonna have like a 20 meters to the pin or something. So maybe a little jump putt for Eagle, but otherwise just take the easy birdie. Really happy with how, how my forehand came out there. Exact angle I wanted, right in the middle of the gap. Just powered down a little bit, made sure to get that flick through, you know. It's a good tip for you guys, I guess. If you're having trouble with early, early releasing your forehand, which I have been, slow down the movement a little bit. Just focus on that last little with the wrist. Make sure to get the hand all the way through. Oh yeah, 17 meters for the eagle here. Has to be a little, uh, little flex putt, but that's, that's fine, I don't mind that. No, it's not getting there, it's hitting the tree. Okay, my jump putt is a little bit rusty, but that's fine. And that's a birdie. So we're two under through five. That's right about where we need to be because there are 18, there are 20 holes. We need to be eight under. Oh, right. We're in the par three position now. I think that means we're on forehand. A Pacific OS, I think. The straight one. Let's put it just on the right side of the gap on a little bit of Anheuser and it should move slowly in there. That's too much Anheuser. Way too much. And some wobble as well. Not a good shot, but uh, again, we're inside like 20 meters. Hopefully not gonna be a bogey. As long as we just don't make any bogeys, I'll give myself enough birdie opportunities to get to eight under, I think. I actually have like a fairly open putt here. Let's try and give it a bid. Let's put it straight at it, flat, but a little nose up. Oh, I'm yanking the jump putts like crazy. Oh my goodness, that is so bad. Just got bogey into play. It's like a 10 meter putt here. No, we don't. Oh goodness gracious, what's that bogey? That is so bad. All right, let's let that be a wake up call though. Bogey, still one under, but can't be putting bad here. Gotta make it work. Now we have this little tunnel shot, which is just a little putter shot, you know? I should be pretty good at this. It's right there. Huge gap. Just a little flat angle throw here with the warden. Yes, it's perfect. And then sit. Went a little bit deep, but that was really nice. Right in the middle of the gap. Of course, it's gonna be another straddle putt here, right? Because it doesn't have to be. No, it's not a straddle. I stand like this. I think I can put straight at it. I just did like a full-on henna blum ruse. I don't know if I've done that before. <laughs> what in the world? I'm scared now. Am I like this? No, this is a full-on yippies. Let's forget it. Let's forget it. You guys didn't see anything. Now let's go get an eagle look on this par four. Aw, oh, yikes. Held on to that like crazy. That's so bad. One of my old bad habits is like I'm trying to throw an Anheuser but I get afraid of grip locking it or something. So I don't like actually do the Anheuser the entire way through. I get to here and then I like bend into it and end up throwing a Heiser because I'm kind of protecting myself or something. It's kind of weird. Just got to be really conscious about holding that angle and that follow through the entire way. And then I can do it. There are so many trees between me and the basket here. I think the roller is to play actually. The BS Spy. This gives me the biggest chance of getting within like 12 meters, I think. And with how I'm putting today, I just need to get within 12 meters, right? It was on the right angle as well. It's literally gonna be right under it, but it squared a tree perfectly. And now what? Am I trusting my jump putt even though it hasn't worked at all? Seems a little bit crazy, doesn't it? Gotta remember to pop it, like, from the get-go. Yes, yes, I hit a gap with a jump putt. Hey man, gotta celebrate these small victories when you're doing bad. That's a par. Really not a hole that you want to par on, to be honest. It's an equal opportunity. I said I was going into a stretch where I could birdie a lot of holes, and then I got one birdie and one bogey, and pars on the rest. Whew. Left side. My forehand's been pretty accurate today, so 
I think we're going for a little spy forehand here. Throw it flat or slight hyzer at the middle tree. <laughs> That's the tree I was aiming for. Did want to fade off it though, but I didn't. I can't believe I'm missing all these easy holes. Going for a little warden toss here. That's good. It's right under it. Right, one under through nine, it's not ideal. Definitely want it to be more than that. But uh, still way within my reach. I can birdie every single hole easily out here, obviously from the yellow tee. This one, it's just through a gap here and then a little bit to the left. There's that mando on the right side that you need to get left of. Should just be a flip up forehand, really. I think I'm gonna go with um, my evader again. Should be able to make it in there. And put it on like a 10 to 15 degrees hyzer. Try and finish the shot here, come on. Finish it with the follow throw and everything. Really be delicate with it. I think I was really good with the swing and everything, but I just turned my hand down a little bit. I have some weird old mistakes that I used to make a lot that's coming back right now because I don't have recent muscle memory to break it up. So it just defaults back to my old habits. I am not gonna fiddle around with throwing this one in. I'm just gonna pitch it up there with a little Burke forehand. Just like that. It's a cool thing about throwing putters on forehands. You can kind of like burn them into the ground. They need to be on a lot of angle before they cut roll. It's another tip. Wow, I'm giving you so many tips, especially considering that I'm one under on the short tee. I guess take the tips at, at your own risk. I did make a promise to you guys that I will be throwing spike hyzers with my Launcher OS on this hole every time until I miss the island. And I haven't missed it yet. I've also only played like three rounds since then. So, but we're still doing it. Now that's really short though. And it missed the island. No, it's good. But that is so short. Maybe a little less hyzer next time. I guess I'm used to a lot of wind from the right side, which carries it. No wind today. So probably uh, would have been better just throw a putter, but you know, I made a promise I'm gonna keep it. Okay, can't really afford many more pars, so gotta give it a run. I don't know, at least it was on the line, but I was short and scared, honestly. A little bit disappointed, but then again, it's better than that 40 degree grip lock I had early on hole seven. Gotta make it up there between the trees. Wanna go uh, hyzer in from the left, from the right side behind the big tree. So gotta pump it a little bit. We're gonna go launch a US, try and get some height on it. Got some height on it. Didn't get enough carry though. Can't believe I'm not making it up there. Another straddle putt. Don't even know if I can straddle it far enough to actually make this. Cause my putt never hyzers much. It just drops. I think I'm gonna go for a lefty uh, Anheuser spin putt here. Also land more flat, which means less risk of rolling away. Oh, that's a really good bid. Just a little more left and it's good. Another par. Now remember, I can start a crazy birdie stretch at any time, but it needs to be right about now because we're running out of holes. I guess the thing I forgot to uh, address on video is I made it to 2,000 subscribers, which thank you guys so much for all the support through this last couple of years. The channel is now just about two years old. I'm thinking what I should do for the 2,000 subscriber special. It may, may take a little bit of time because um, I need to figure out the best way to do it. And I do have something I want to give away as well, or I want to give something away. I need to figure out what it is. I'm thinking about doing the Ace Run Challenge on hole 11 because I did promise myself when moving to Old Bowl that I would never move away from the city for an Ace hole 11 because it's the most beautiful hole in the course. So I really want to do that, but I don't know how much time that's going to take. But you know, if I just rip a bunch of mid ranges from the tee, I should get it within like a couple of hours. But my idea is maybe if I can make it work, I'm not sure how to do it and everything, but if I can make it work, how about a live stream where I'll give something away every hour that I use on it? Would you join a live, a live stream on YouTube if I made one with like Ace running on that hole? 
definitely let me know if you think it's a good idea and if you have a better idea let me know in the comments because I want to make it special just throwing a warden straight at this thing should be a fairly easy hold this one I'm just gonna throw it like hole seven actually a little bit higher maybe no oh, it's to the left get over the hill though it is over the hill since I had to circle but again like my putting hasn't been genius yet so yeah I guess I did complain a little bit too much about this drive huh a little six meter putt here. Should be doable. All right, two under. This is where the birdie streak starts, right? That's what I said. And a whole 14, if I get a decent drive, should be very easy actually for me. Because it's not very far and it's a forehand hole from the yellow tee. The launcher, it's gonna try and throw it like flat to maybe a little bit of Anheuser, let it kind of follow the angle of the hill all the way down there. Oh, goodness gracious. Roll in. That's the worst shot I've ever thrown on this hole. I was very fortunate to roll through the bushes out here to a reach out forehand. So the birdie is not yet out of play. I think we're just going the same disc actually. Because it worked so well for me, you know. Kappa. And it did anyways. That's so bad. Okay, I know what's been going wrong, guys. I haven't been throwing the note glide spy today at all. That's why we're only two under. Man, everyone needs one of those discs, huh? That's so easy. Within a meter. What's the note glide spy in your bag? I mean, you gotta have one approach disc that's just the easiest thing in the world to pitch right under there if you have the hyzer. What is it? Really good putter as well. Now, I haven't played this tee pad much because it's fairly new. I'm not quite sure what my play is, but it looks to be a pretty just like straight forehand that maybe skips a little bit in the end. No flex. And a little high. Not ideal. Really not ideal. Get another chance at the little flex putt that I have. Little flex jumper. I used to be pretty good at this. Yes. No, what? Ah, just a little bit right. That could have caught us well, honestly. From the yellow tee, this is a very straight up shot. Just, just like so much open air space up there to the right. So it's only about getting the angle right so it doesn't skip way down a hill. Oh my goodness. I'm so bad. I'm actually so bad. I can't even throw it high enough. Yeah, freaking pillar. Give it some good height so I can get enough right. No. It's not even a good layup. He's got a good straddle butt here. Come on. Yes. This is rubbery at daylight. Bro, it's two in a row. Come on. Oh well, back to one under. Now we actually can't make it, but I'm gonna finish it. Also, like I said, it's a long time since I've played disc golf, so I'm actually really happy right now. Having a lot of fun, you know? Studying has kind of taken over my everyday life. Trying to finish the Anheuser here. Get that follow through down into the ground like I always tell new players. Yes. That's such a good shot. Wow, beautiful flex. But yeah, when I started studying, you guys probably remember, I said that I wanted to spend like 15 to 20 hours a week on studying and then the rest on disc golf and all my other stuff. But turns out, so far I've spent like over 30 hours a week on studying and I can't seem to spend less than that because there's a lot of group projects so I feel like I'm letting, I'm letting my group down if I slack more on the, on the studying and I expect to spend less time on it. But I could easily make it through the course going like 20 hours a week and only being there for like some of it but I feel like I gotta perform my best when I'm in a group and now I feel like I need to perform to not let myself down this is probably the best drive I've had from the LOT or up there at least really important that I get this on the Anheuser and nose down <laughs> every time I say over the top I just throw it like one meter over the ground straight into a another pillar i don't want to be the guy that can't throw it over something so we're going over the top now it's 
little bit right, but it's in there. It's a birdie. It's birdie? It's a par. At least if I'm good at putting. And the baskets can catch for once. Catch that one, okay? Thank you. Okay, I can't really reach my goal anymore, but I gotta show myself that I can at least birdie hole 18 from the low tee. That is the easiest thing in the world. It's just a hyzer up this gap, then a hyzer up to the trees, and then a little jump putt through it. And I made it halfway. That felt so awkward. Don't know what I'm doing. I am unwilling to par this hole. It's just not gonna happen. So I'm just gonna absolutely launch a forehand out there. Forehand flex. Oh yeah. We're up there. Should be the easiest little pitch over the ditch. Okay, I'm literally right in the middle of the gap. It's outside jump out range, but I should really be able to just throw a little berg right over there, land it right at the pin. Yep. I think that's good. Yeah, easily fine. Like 20 centimeters in. It's more than enough. Okay, that's satisfying. Say that I'd, I wanna do something, burying hole 18 no matter what. We pulled it through. Finally did something that I wanted to do. And now hole 19 with no wind is just a beautiful thing because I think it's gonna fit perfect for like a full power berg Throwing a little bit high, and it should just stop at the basket because it doesn't want to fly anymore. Or just throw it straight at it. No anhyzer, and be way short. I guess it's time to test my nerves. Am I a man or a mouse, as we usually say? 13 meters, pure death behind it. I did the thing again, the grip lock thing. Please do not make that a thing. Something in my body did not want to release that disc. And I understand it, honestly. Because it was not a good idea what I was doing. I'm turning my hand new. So we were just laying it up. My inside the circle putting though feels pretty good today. All right, this little cutie. Should we go for the ace through the V? See a little V tree there? I wanna do it and we're gonna try it. I think there is enough space to get through. That ain't it. That ain't it. To eight meters, because I want to finish on a good putt, you know? Nice putt, you know? Really got to finish on a nice putt, you know? Hey, you always finish on a nice putt, because it has to go in in the end. Finishing one under through 20 holes from the short tee. Not impressive, but turns out Oliver Henson's 22 under through three rounds is actually pretty good. So well done, Oliver. Thank you so much for watching this video. And like I said, let me know in the comments if you think my idea for the 2000 sub should be fun. Of course it should be fun, but is it fun, the idea that I have? And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. I definitely enjoyed it. It's been a while since I've played disc golf. It's fun to get out here again. I'll see you next week. Have a good one. I'm going to redo this putt. That's way better.